Hey, what's going on YouTube? Isaac, the new backwoodsman here, coming at you just to chat a little bit about traditional pattern knives such as these. This is the trapper pattern and this is a stockman. You may be familiar with them. They've been around for many, many years. Stockman has three blades. So we got a main working blade, usually a clip point you'll see in these. And we got a you know, Warncliffe style blade and a spay blade. The Trapper, a bit different. It has a longer clip point blade. Sometimes you'll see these with a drop point, but also pretty much always a clip point blade and also a spay or skinning style blade. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the case for these knives. Pun 100% intended. The case for these knives as a survival knife. Now, when one thinks of a survival knife, you'll probably think of a big, thick, fixed blade knife that you can chop wood with and whack stuff and cut whatever you want with. But a survival knife is often coined as a knife that you have on you at the time when you need it. And traditional knives are still quite popular to collect. You know, Case being a top brand. You know, you got your Great Eastern Cutlery for those uh, kind of more, I guess you could call them top tier. They're highly desirable, but uh, not top tier in terms of price. There's some custom ones that get very expensive. Uh, then you, of course, have uh, your Rough Riders, extremely popular and super cheap um, from places like Smoky Mountain Knife Works or wherever. You might get a Rough Rider knife for sale. They have them in all patterns, all made in China, but uh, cool handle materials like uh, Micarta and G10 and whatnot. Uh, Case has that too, but of course, Case made in America, they are more expensive. But that's what I got here. So let's talk a bit about what you need a knife for in a survival situation. Survival situation, not bushcraft. Okay, so we're, we're lost in an outdoor setting. Spend a night or two until your search and rescue team arrives or you're smart enough to bail your own self out. So a night or two you're probably not going to be chopping wood to start a fire, depending what time of year it is, maybe. So maybe in a winter environment, maybe you would need that large full tank fixed blade knife as your survival knife. But let's say it's middle of June here where I live right now. It's warm, sunny, summertime. I'm not going to freeze to death outside don't need that fire to keep me alive. You know, very low chance of hypothermia, so I'm not going to be batoning big firewood. There's plenty of deadfall on the, the ground or hanging that I can use to construct a fire. And I can use this blade right here to shave up maybe some fat wood or just regular wood shavings and bark into fine stuff to take a spark from a ferro rod or use the big lighter that I usually carry on me in a wilderness setting. I don't need my Topps Operator 7 to do that. I can get by with this. Now, if you're out there for a bit extended period and you get extra hungry and need to get some wild game, well, you're not going to go sneak up on a some big old eight point white tail buck and stab him in the neck with this thing. You're not going to do that. You're not going to do that with most any knife unless you're super cool. But this could aid in carving a trap out of sticks like a figure four. You could do that with this or, you know, the other one I have here. Simple. You could catch, let's just say a squirrel. Very common throughout North America catch a squirrel 
and a figure four deadfall trap that you carved with this knife. You can also process that squirrel with this knife. Probably much easier to do with these two blades than like your BK2 or SE6 or Operator 7 that I mentioned earlier. This knife's probably not the best for that. You're not going to be doing large game like a deer in a survival situation. My, even the squirrels probably, uh, that's probably about what you're going to get when those type of traps. Maybe other small rodents like a, a chipmunk. Hopefully not a mouse who wants to eat a mouse. Uh, but these knives will get that done. Even this one too. You know, you can you can carve with, uh, personally, I'd probably choose that one. Carve into the traps. Then to, you know, clean game, or like the quick point and skin. There you go. Three tools here and one knife. That is also one of the main advantages of the traditional pattern knife as a survival knife. You have more than one knife. So everybody uses the clip point. It's like the main working blade for these knives. And since you do that, it's also going to dull the fastest because you're using it more. But then you switch right over to this one if it gets too dull. Two in one. There was a video a while back um, that uh, Donnie V all day did. I think he reviewed this exact case knife where he said this, this bay blade can divot into a soft piece of wood to make that round notch that you would need to start a bow drill fire in a survival situation. Now, I don't know how to do a bow drill fire. I've never tried it. Maybe I will someday. No real need or desire to do that right now. Whenever I adventure in the wilderness, I always carry a big lighter and a ferro rod at minimum. Maybe some more. So I feel very comfortable with that. I'm, I'm not trying to live a primitive skills lifestyle. Stuff like that is fun stuff to learn. But and if I were to get into a survival situation, I would have at least some things with me on my person, such as a big lighter and a pocket knife. And personally, I think I'd be good to go for at least a night or two to spend uncomfortably outside. Now, does the traditional pocket knife completely replace the need to have that full tank fixed blade knife as your main survival option. No, no. I, I don't want to say that because I don't mean that. I think this is a good supplemental tool to keep in a kit just in case you would happen to have lost your fixed blade knife. As everyone knows, any fixed blade knife is stronger and more reliable than any folding knife, okay? But I don't want people to rule out the option that these can be a valuable survival knife. So keep it in your kit, in a pocket, as it's meant to be carried, and go about your way and don't lose heart if you're lost in the woods and all you've got is your case traditional folding knife. Take care, everyone. Have a fantastic day.